Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danielle and I'm the owner of Damn Fancy Creations and the Drunk Flamingo Glitter. Today's tutorial, we are going to be using my March's flock box patterns, which are these super fun flamingo floaties with pineapples. I just love them so much and I thought that they were the perfect patterns to use, especially since we have been having a lot of warmer weather here in Georgia. So it has me wanting to make all things summer, fun, bright, all things like that. We are going to be using a template today. If you guys have followed me for a while, and you have seen me use templates. Most of the time they come from my friend Yanelli over at Ellie's Crafty Co. I can go on her website and find a different template every time I visit her shop. She has lots of different templates that are a little unique. You may not find them everywhere. And I thought that this swirly template kind of reminded me of ocean waves. So I thought it was perfect to go with our flamingo floaty theme. Before we get started, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so you are notified when my tutorials drop first. And don't forget to check out the description where I list all of the items needed to recreate this tumbler, as well as discount codes from my favorite suppliers, including our discount for Ellie's Crafty Co. All right, y'all, let's get started. All right guys, so this is what we have to get started. I already pre-cut my template and I base painted my tumbler white. And I always like to peel off one section of the template just so I can kind of see where I'm placing it. And if it needs to connect with the opposite side, it just gives me a good way to line everything up. And I did base paint my tumbler white. I always spray paint it at least white and then a different color if I'm going to be using one color glitter. But since I'm going to be using four different colored glitters, I just base coated it white. And I'm just going to apply this the same way I do my regular vinyl. I'm just cutting off a little bit to act as a hinge I am going to go ahead and remove the tape on the bottom. I do take tape my bottoms off. And I'm using my cup cradle from Cami Page Boutique to draw my straight line down the tumbler. Out of all of Brooke's tools, I probably use my cup cradle the most. So if you guys do not have it, I highly suggest getting one. We do have a discount code for her below. And I just use this as a hinge wrap that wrap around my tumbler just to make sure that everything is lined up. And once everything looks lined up, we are going to remove the backing of the wrap and start wrapping it around the tumbler. Now I seem to do this a different way almost every time I use a wrap. Sometimes I use the backing on, sometimes I remove the backing completely. Sometimes if I leave the backing on and try to like roll the vinyl out, some of the little pieces kind of get caught and stick to the backing instead of coming off. So you just kind of have to do it with whatever way you are comfortable doing it. So this time I just removed the whole backing and I'm just using my little squeegee to smooth down the vinyl. And I made this one just a little bit larger, but it lined up perfectly. It did not overlap any of the other little spots that would be glittered and it was pretty straight. So since I do not wrap the bottoms of my cup, I am going to get my edging tools that are also from Cami Page Boutique, and we are going to edge the vinyl. And I always have 
two. I have a low profile one, which is technically designed for mugs or tumblers with a handle so that the higher profile does not get in the way of the handle. So I keep one of my edging tools on the second space and the other edging tool on the first space because you will need different spaces for the tops and the bottom of your cup. So instead of switching out your blade each time you need to um, edge your tumbler, I just leave one on each setting, I guess. So I just really go around my tumbler one time with this blade if my blade is fresh. And now you have a nice, smooth, even rim. I also do this after epoxy as well. I just heat up my epoxy with warm water and then I edge it that way. And I was trying to decide what colors I wanted to choose. Like picking colors is always so difficult for me. <laughs> Even if I, like if I have more than a couple especially with vinyl that has so many different colors in it. I always second guess myself. So I know for sure I wanted to use gold. So we're starting out with Mimosa 2.0 and I'm using glitter glue. I'm just speeding this up a little bit so you are not literally watching paint dry. <laughs> And I know a lot of people use the tumbler tape or the cat scratch tape or things like that to glitter their templates with. I personally do not like using that. I always just use glitter glue because I feel like I get better coverage. And this is glitter glue from Artistry. I have not tried any other glitter glues. I've always just used Artistry's, but I'm sure whatever glitter glue you use will work just fine, as long as it's not Mod Podge. <laughs> and I'm just using a brush that's a little bit smaller than the width of the little design. So that way I'm not getting any of the glitter glue on the actual vinyl. So once I have my first little design glittered, I am just brushing off the excess glitter. I am not brushing on top of the design itself, just around the vinyl. That way I just clear it off a little bit. And then I kind of check for blank spots if I see any right away. So now we're moving on to the next color. We're going to be using Ranch Water, which is one of my favorite kind of like minty greens. It also has some opal in it. And we're just going to do the same thing. We're just applying that glitter glue And now that we are glittering next to glitter, we do have to be a little bit more careful because I don't want that green to stick to the gold. And you will also notice as I'm glittering that I try my best to apply my glitter colors from darkest to lightest. That way if a glitter falls on the color below it, it's not going to be as noticeable because it will be a lighter color. If I were going to sprinkle my gold glass, which is an oh, wow. opaque metallic, it would have shown up more on the green.
So now we will have two more sections left to glitter. You guys can just listen to my little birds chirping if you can hear them. I had a lot out earlier. I hear some, but they're kind of in the distance right now. And the pups are just watching some squirrels in the woods. It is a nice day in Georgia. It is like mid-70s right now, so it is perfect weather to sit on my porch and voice this video for you guys. So I did switch out my colors. I decided to not use the orange that I had chosen because it did have a lot of chunky in it. And I didn't want that chunky glitter to overlap the other colors. And I opted to go with Starburst Martini instead of Prickly Pear Margarita, which is what I really wanted to use. But I did not want to spend time base painting the tumbler hot pink and then going back and glittering it hot pink because Prickly Pear Margarita is a translucent glitter. And if I try to apply it on top of a white base, I don't like how it looks. I only like it if it's on a hot pink base or just a pink base in general. But I do like how Starburst Martini looks. It's very similar to the color that is in the umbrella. And then I think a shade in the beach bag. And there's our daily train y'all. So now we're going to get out our last color and I did decide to go with a white. So I chose Dusty Rose. It has a little bit of chunky in it, but it also has an opal base with some pink and purple mixed in. So after I get done glittering this little design, I will let it dry completely, probably about an hour, maybe a little bit longer, depending on how thick you apply your glitter glue. Then I will brush it off really good with a soft paintbrush, and I will just take a good look to see if there are any little spots that I miss that I need to touch up, re-glitter. Then I will spray seal it. I typically use Rust-Oleum two times clear. I use gloss or matte. It doesn't matter to me. The matte does dry quicker. It does not affect the finish of the cup after you epoxy. Once that sealer is dried, I'm going to put two coats of epoxy on it. And this is just what it looks like with epoxy on it. I did not feel myself epoxying this time, but after it is cured, I will sand it really well. And I had these little stars um, from a previous tumbler that I think I did in the fall, probably like a disco cowgirl one or something like that. And I thought they would look cute kind of peeking through the swirls. I thought they were just fun, summery, and hot pink. And I figured since I didn't use hot pink glitter, I would add some hot pink stars.
So I'm just placing these stars right now on the tumbler and then I'm going to go and actually cut off the pieces that are in the glitter design. So I'm just kind of placing them where I want to right now. Um, I am layering them. I know you cannot see the white stars that are on this paper, but I cut out white stars and hot pink stars. And I think when I initially cut these out, they were probably one inch and one and a half inch. So you can see right now, I'm just going in with a razor blade and just trimming the star part that overlaps the glitter swirls. So we just kind of have like our little glitter swirls going through a flamingo party and stars. And this one was a little off center, so I just took the pink off and recentered it. And after we get all of our stars trimmed, we are going to go back and outline all of our little glitter swirls with pinstripes. And with these templates, I always think that the pinstriping is what just takes everything to the next level. It always just makes it 10 times better. So I'm just kind of getting out all of my little pinstripes that I have. If you guys did not know, I do have a pinstripe file on the drunkflamingo.com and it has my most popular pinstripe sizes, which is typically 0 0.07, 0 0.05, and 0 0.03. And when I cut out pinstripes, you can see here that I have a full sheet of white pinstripes. So I will cut about a third of the page in the 0 0.07 size, a third of the page in the 0 0.05 side, and a third of the page in the 0 0.03 size. So that way I have multiple different sizes in multiple colors. So if I want to layer them or do different designs, I have all different sizes and colors to choose from. And if you are working with curves and trying to apply pinstripes, you're going to kind of have to know the vinyl that you're working with. The vinyl that I'm using today is just regular adhesive vinyl. I am not using holographic or the opal vinyl or metal vinyls because those vinyls tend to be thicker, a little bit more stiff and not as flexible as the regular colors. And when you're working with curves, you want that vinyl to be as flexible as you can so that you can get those good rounded edges without having that vinyl kind of wrinkling up or crinkling.
So I am just kind of laying the vinyl and using my finger to kind of guide it in that curve. And this video is sped up quite a bit. So I am just taking my time, um, just working with each little section at a time. I'm not getting in a rush to do this. And after I apply one or two sections, I will take my heat gun and kind of warm that vinyl a little bit and help that vinyl adhere to the cup and lay down really well, which also helps to get rid of any tiny little wrinkles that I may see. And this was honestly probably the most time consuming part of the whole tumbler, just applying these pinstripes because I did have to work slower than if I were applying a straight pinstripe and in smaller sections. So this final right here, I know it's not a regular color. It is a glitter vinyl. However, the actual vinyl is very similar to just a regular color. I've worked with this vinyl before to do curved pinstripes, so I knew it would react the way that I wanted it to and lay flat to the tumbler. So y'all can see I am just guiding that vinyl around the curves. And I will go ahead and let you guys know that for most pinstripes, I like to seal my edges with UV resin. However, I typically only do that if I am using holographic or a metal vinyl or something that I know does not cooperate as well as I would like it to or tends to lift under epoxy. Now for this particular tumbler, most of the vinyl was just a regular colored vinyl or this glitter vinyl that acts like regular vinyl. So I did not seal it with anything. I actually just warmed everything up with my heat gun to make sure that that adhesive would kind of heat up and react well with um, the tumbler and it did not lift under epoxy. So we have one more pinstripe to go, y'all. I told you, the pinstriping is the most time-consuming part. But here again, I'm just warming everything up, making sure that everything is laid flush to the tumbler. Then we're going to grab our final pinstripe. I was trying to find pink. I thought that I had a pink somewhere, but I couldn't find it so I just went with white again so we started with white and we're also ending with white so after my pinstripes are on the tumbler I am just going to check everything really well make sure that all of the pinstripes are laid flat against the tumbler and I will wait for the adhesive to create that bond with the tumbler before I take it down and epoxy. And like I mentioned earlier, I did not seal this with anything. I did not use a spray adhesive. I did not use a liquid sealer. I just warmed everything with my heat gun. If you are going to warm up the vinyl with your heat gun, you do have to be careful to make sure you don't overheat it. You can melt the vinyl and that will cause it to burn and curl on the edges. So you just want to use enough heat to warm it up a little bit. 
after I'm sure that my vinyl is set, I'm going to take this downstairs and do two more layers of epoxy. Anytime I do vinyl, I always do two layers of epoxy just to make sure that that vinyl is nice and sealed in. And after that final layer of epoxy cures, then your tumbler will be complete. So here are some finished pictures of this tumbler. I love how it turned out. I think it just screams summer, fun, pool party, all the good vibes. I think it turned out really cute and I'm glad that I did this template. It did take a long time to do the pinstripes, but I think the end result is really cool. I love all the swirls. If you guys decide to give this tumbler a try, make sure you post in the Drunk Flamingo. I love to see what you guys create, what kind of things inspire you. And yeah, so thanks for watching, y'all. If you enjoyed this tutorial or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my damn fancy tutorial group or my drunk flamingo group. Both are linked in the description. Thanks for watching.